Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to cut and make some bias binding for a quilt. So most often we, when I'm making a quilt, I would put on a straight cut binding. But if I'm doing something a little bit different, perhaps with some curves or in this case some scalloped edges, I need to have something that will go around those curves. And so a bias will work for me there. And so just to, to, to demonstrate that, if you're cutting fabric on the straight, if you were to just, because you can see I've got the straight selvage here, if I just give that a little tug on the straight, it doesn't have a lot of give. And if I tug it the other way, which is also straight with the weave, again, it doesn't have a lot of give that way. But if I do the bias, which is the diagonal of the fabric, there's quite a lot of give. And so if we cut it on that, that, that direction so that it's got that give, it's going to be able to go round the curves on the scallops or wavy edges or whatever it is that you're doing that's not just a straight edge. Um, so it's going to be used as a double fold binding that I'm doing. So this is my quilt that I've got here so I'll quickly run through how to um, measure for your binding and then I'll just quickly show you how to do the cutting and, and joining up and show you how that's going to work. So I've just got a small quilt here that I'm going to do scalloped edges around. Oh, I've already cut those so we can see that it's going to be scalloped. Uh, my quilt, just for, for ease, I can just tell you that when I started doing this quilt, it's only a small quilt and I had a quilt that was 42 inches square before I did all the quilting and cutting of the scallops and things. And since I've quilted it and cut it all and I've measured all the way around my edges, it comes out at just under 42 inches, so pretty much the same size. I haven't really lost anything even though I've changed the shape. With it coming in a little bit with quilting and various things, it seems to work pretty much the same as before I started really. So I've got a 42 inch quilt. So to work out for the amount of binding you need, when you're working out for any sort of quilt binding, you need to know the length of the sides of your quilt. So we've got four different sides, which in my case are going to all be the same because it's square, but you might have two and two. It might be a rectangular quilt, so the opposite sides are going to be the same. When I'm working it out, I work out the size, the length of my quilt, I measure my quilt. I add on four inches to each side to allow for corners and joins and any other little things that might come along the way. So my 42 inch quilt now is going to be 46 inches for the sake of working out this measurement. I'm going to multiply that by four because there's four sides and it's going to come out at 184 inches. So I need a distance or a length of 184 inches of binding to go all the way around my quilt. And so that's great. We know how to then work out if we were doing a straight edge on a quilt, straight edge binding, we know that we could just divide that by the width of the fabric to find out how many strips we need. Well, when you cut it on the bias, it's a little bit different because it's a different cut. So we've worked out this formula that if you work out the distance that you need and divide that by 11, you come out with an answer that's going to tell you the, the length of fabric that you need to purchase, like yardage or meterage, whatever it is. So in my case, I had 184 inches going all the way around the quilt, so that's how much distance I need. And if I divide that by 11, I come up with an answer of 16 point something. And because I'm working in inches, that comes out at 16 inches or 16 point something inches. So I have ended up with a piece of fabric to cut my binding from that is 16 inches wide. Um, that's the full width of fabric, but it's 16 inches or long, I should say. I, I have a length of 16 inches, but the fabric is, of course, wider. So I'm going to cut my binding for this quilt from that 16 inches. So the distance all around your quilt, including your corners and joining bits, divide it by 11, and then you'll have it an amount that will tell you the length of fabric you need to have. Um, you can, of course, if you've got a quilt that's got straight edges and you're trying to change it to have um, scalloped or wavy edges, you could just multiply by um, 1.4 or 1.5, so one and a half times as much fabric um, as you would need for a straight binding, so just as a, a bit of an idea. So when I'm going to cut my strips now, to get my bias, I, what I've done is I've, I've got my 16 inches of fabric and I trimmed it so that it's got straight edges both sides and I'm going to help use the board to help me position this because the board has very conveniently got these nice diagonal markings on it. So I'm going to use this long diagonal to help me get that first diagonal cut. Now if your fabric is longer than this you can of course um, 
fold it over, but you would need to be careful doing that to make sure you folded it the right way. So we're just going to do this one today. So I've lined it up with the markings on my board so that I know the fabric is sitting straight. And I'm going to pop my ruler so that it, it just touches that. I've got a nice long ruler. You do need a longer ruler for this. I'm going to, to line it up. So I'm going to cut right through on that diagonal line, which will give me my starting point for my bias. Now this corner here that we've just cut away, we probably don't need it, but you could cut some shorter strips if you found you needed a little bit more for some reason, or you can use that for some other project. How exciting, more projects. And now the other thing before I cut that, I'll just quickly show you, when we cut binding for quilts, very often we cut them maybe at two and a half inches, maybe two and a quarter inches, depending on uh, often a personal preference as to how things work for you and often the type of batting you're using. I'm of, often using a cotton so I don't want it too big so two and a quarter or two and a half is what I usually use. When I did this scalloped edge on this little quilt here I cut my binding at two and a quarter inches and I just felt it was a little bit wide and cumbersome. I'm happy enough with it but it was I felt it could have been just a touch narrower. So when I, when I did the binding on this quilt, I cut my binding only two inches wide. Because we're going around corners and things, it didn't seem to need any extra width. Um, and I'm doing mine all by machine. So I'm going to cut my strips for this quilt that I'm doing today um, two inches wide. So you could choose whether you do it two, two and a quarter, or two and a half. So I'm going to lay my, I'm leaving my fabric where I cut it on that diagonal line, just for ease of placement. And now I'm going to cut some two inch strips. So this time I'm going to lay my ruler over the top and I'm lining up my two inch from the edge of the ruler in along my previously cut line. And so when you're doing this on the diagonal here, just make sure that it's sitting out both ends past your fabric. Make sure that it's sitting nice and straight along your two inch line or whatever size, two and a quarter, whatever it is that you're cutting. And I'm going to cut through that strip there. Now, I know that you can get eight strips across a width of fabric, cutting like this, or the width that you're cutting. Now you could move that along every time, or you can just simply trust that you're going to keep it nice and straight, and lay your ruler again with that two inches, making sure that it's sticking out at both ends, so that you can run the ruler past at both ends, and just keep cutting your strips. So I'm going to need eight strips and I can get eight strips out of the width. So in the end you have a little bit more wastage when you're cutting on the bias because you've got those corners that you don't need. Um, I'll just cut another strip here and I won't make you watch me cut all eight strips. And then I'll just quickly show you how I will join them up. Join them up. So I'm sticking out both ends. I'm lined up with my two inch line here and I've got that nice and now because I had cut my edges of my fabric nice and straight, my edges are now ready to join. So if I put these end to end, they're going to join up quite nicely. So when I'm going to do that, I'm going to lay that. We'll do two joins because I'll just show you how I do the next bit as well. So I'm going to lay that so that just a little bit sticks like the quarter of an inch seam allowance amount sticks out either end of my seam and do my regular quarter inch seam along there. And, whoops, need some feed teeth. I've been quilting. So I'm going to do that. I'll just turn that on so it's heating ready for us. And then without taking that out, to keep on joining up, I'm going to flip this one over and put this one on top. So that's you don't want to tw twist them or anything, but that was down that way. I want it flipped right side up, and I can just keep joining up my all my strips this way without having to take everything in and out of the sewing machine all the time. So it's like a chain piecing, they're all attached. So then you can just cut them apart and you would have several of them if you were doing the whole lot all in one go. 
and then I will just press my seams open So this is a little bit stretchy now, so when you're pressing and things, just remember this join is fine, but the edges and things, don't go pulling it too much as you do any pressing, because it will pull out of shape a little bit, which wouldn't be helpful at this stage. So you can, if you press the seams open, they'll sit better when you're pu putting it together onto the quilt. And so you would do that, of course, with all of your joins and if I bring the quilt back I'll just show you quickly now how because that's now on a bias by the time you do that you can actually get that to spread around and that is going to then curl over nicely when we put it on so that's why we do the bias because it is now stretchy it's got room to do that curling around so I'll show you how to apply the binding in a different video but I'll just quickly recap the calculating for doing a, bind, a bias binding. So you need the four different measurement or four measurements of the four sides of your quilt plus an amount and I use four inches for corners and joins. You multiply that or you add sorry you add up all the four sides to a total length of binding that you need to go all around four sides and you can divide that by 11 and if you're working in inches that amount that, you, that comes out is going to be an approximate amount of inches that you need of fabric or if you're working in metric it works the same way. That answer that comes out after you've divided your total distance by 11 will give you the amount of fabric that you need to be able to get the amount of fabric that you need to do your bias binding. So hopefully that will help and as I said I'll show you how to apply it in a separate video so happy bias.